6 in the uh, the book of Revelation. And uh, sure now you probably are started started the recording at this point. Um, let's uh, let's again review and I'll do this every week and you will get tired of hearing it, but this will help you put together the book and understand the book as a whole as opposed to each lesson as we do each lesson. Uh, we said in, in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, was kind of the outline of the book. John was instructed to write three things. Do you remember what the first thing was? Write what he saw. And what he saw was what? The glorified Christ in chapter 1. And he describes him to us in Lent in chapter 1. So he said, the Lord said to John, John, write what you see. And what he saw was Christ in chapter 1. Then he said, write the things that are. And that's in chapters 2 and 3. And what's he talking about the things that are? We went through the seven churches, right? The seven letters to the seven churches. That's in chapters 2 and 3. But that entire, those seven churches represent all the churches today, represents our church. And, and, and we are living in, you and I are living in, a time that biblically we would call the church age, the age of grace. So, John, write what you saw, what he saw was Jesus. Write the things that are, that's the letter, seven letters, seven completeness to the seven churches. That's where we are living today. That's the things going on today. And uh, you and I are fortunate to be living in this age of grace, the church age. Christ has come. He has died. He's resurrected. He's gone back into heaven. He's sent the Holy Spirit to live in us and direct us. He's given us His book, His Word, to guide and direct us. Uh, Christians before the church age didn't have all that. Amen. They, they lived on promises that it was coming. But you and I are living on the fact that it has happened and that He's coming back. So John, write what you saw, Jesus in chapter 1. Write the things that are, the church age, chapters 2 and 3. And then he said, write what? Third thing, write the things that's going to happen in the future. And that's the rest of the book of Revelation. Chapter 4 through chapter 22. And that's what we're looking at now. Every Wednesday night, at the, uh, we believe at the end of chapter 3, that represented the end of the church age. Chapter 4, John is caught up into heaven. And we believe that's a picture of the church being raptured. Uh, one of the main events in prophecy is what we call the rapture. All believers being caught up into heaven, uh, leaving this old earth, and, uh, and going to heaven to be in the presence of the Lord and, and, and of God the Father. So we believe that took place in chapter 4, verse 1. And we looked at chapter 4, and we found ourselves in the throne room of heaven, uh, in, the, in, the, in the throne room where God the Father is seated. And John described him in a number of ways, uh, uh, associating light and stones and different things to, uh, to describe for us God's throne in heaven. Then in chapter 5, we're still in the throne room in heaven, and who do we see? A lamb and a lion, right? Both representative of Christ Jesus. So... And at the end of chapter 5, there is a scroll in heaven, a book written on the front of the back. It's full, it's complete, and it has seven seals. And uh, first, no man is worthy to take that book and open it. But then there is Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain. He is worthy, and he takes that scroll from the Father's hand. And now he's going to begin to remove one seal at a time until... The seven seals are removed. And tonight, as we go into chapter 6, we move from uh, looking at everything in heaven to looking at things on earth. And we move into a period that the Bible refers to as a time of tribulation. And um, uh, it's great to be in the throne room of heaven, chapters 4 and 5, be in the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus, Worshiping happening all around the throne. But now the scene changes. And no longer are we looking at things in heaven. 
Now we're going to be looking at things on earth. In chapter 6, uh, judgment begins. Jesus, the Lamb, takes that scroll and He begins to open the scroll and He begins to remove the seals. And tonight, we look at uh, the first uh, four scroll or the first four seals being removed. And uh, as each seal is removed, a horseman is released uh, to come to the earth. And uh, you've, you've heard this term, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, that's what we're looking at tonight at the beginning of the great tribulation. If somebody asks you, what do you mean by the great tribulation? How would you explain it to them? What would you say it's about? We, 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 we experience every day, do we not, God's love and His grace and His mercy. But God is more than that. God, God is also righteous and holy and just. And, and, and He will punish unrighteousness. And He's long-suffering. He is so patient. If you and I were in his shoes, we would have probably already uh, called judgment down on this whole world. But he's given every person every opportunity to be saved. But, but the day is coming, and that's what we're reading about, where his judgment begins to be poured out. Uh, we believe, the Bible teaches that this, this uh, tribulation period, this time of tribulation, is a seven-year period, a seven-year time frame. And... Uh, we believe that at the beginning of the tribulation, at the beginning here, chapter six, that uh, the Antichrist, that the, now think, remember, remember the believers have been taken back up into heaven, and with the believers gone, and uh, and the Holy Spirit that dwells with us, that the Bible says is kind of holding back a lot of the evil in the world, will will that 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 holding back uh, job, the Holy Spirit will be taken away. And uh, if we think things are bad now, uh, things are going to get much worse when the believers are gone and when the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is removed. Um, but we believe the first three, and I, I say we believe, Bible scholars believe, the first three and a half years of that seven years, and it's referred to many times throughout Scripture as 42 months, three and a half years, 1,200 and some days, different places in different, in, in different Scriptures it's described differently. But it's a three and a half year period, half that seven years. And the first half, the Antichrist is going to go about making peace and uh, he's going to be talking peace and, he, and the world's going to follow him and he's going to become the, the, the world leader and uh, he's even going to make a pact with Israel. How long have we heard about peace talks in the Middle East? And how long have we heard, you know, they, they, make, they, they get close but then it falls apart, they make no progress. All my life, I have heard on TV about we need to have peace talks or we're having peace talks, but they never get peace over there in the Middle East. Well, when the Antichrist comes on the scene in that first three and a half years, they're going to get a peace pact, and, and, and everybody's going to think this is great, this is great, and at, at, the end, at the end of that three and a half years, he's going to break those peace treaties, and uh, he's going to declare war on God's people, and especially the Jews, and, uh, and then there's going to be three and a half years of, of hell on earth, basically. Uh, the last three and a half years of that seven-year tribulation period. It's the wrath of the Lamb. I have given you there uh, in your outline uh, three or four verses to look at that kind of describes uh, the tribulation. Um, look with me. And I need to read these verses because we're recording this for people to listen to, or I would have you read them, but then the mic may not pick you up. But I'd like for you to turn there with me. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to bring your Bibles. We're not going to put anything on the screen on Wednesday nights. But uh, go with me to that first verse, Matthew 24. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 21. Matthew 24, Jesus is telling his disciples about things that's going to happen in the future. And uh, we'll look at this verse now, and we'll come back to Matthew 24 at the end of our lesson tonight. But uh, Matthew 24, uh, look at verse 21. Now, this is Jesus talking. 
Jesus for, says, For then there will be great tribulation. He's talking about that seven-year period. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. Jesus said there's a time of tribulation coming, and there's never been a time like it before. And then he says, no, nor ever shall be. He says there's never been a time like it before, and there'll never be a time like it after it's over. This seven years is the worst of the worst. And, and Jesus said it's coming. And then we can look over in the Old Testament, the book of uh, Jeremiah. Ladies, you all will in, in, in appreciate this verse more than the men will. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 6 and 7. Listen what Jeremiah wrote. He says, Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with a child. Have we ever heard of a man having a baby? Well, the answer, that's a rhetorical question. Of course not, no. But listen what he says. Again, ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with a child. If that's so, no man's ever had a child, then why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor and all face, face is turned pale. So what's he saying? He's saying, listen, man, you've never known what it's like to have a baby. But he said, why do I see men, talking about in this tribulation period, with their hands, what? On their loins or like this, and they are in such pain, they're in pain like a, like, like a woman giving birth to a baby. And, and, and that's the kind of pain that, uh, that people are going to suffer. Look at verse 7. He said, Alas, for that day has come so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. Many times the tribulation period is referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble. But look what he says. But he shall be what? Saved out of it. He shall be saved out of it. Saved people. And that's why we believe there's a rapture. Saved people will be saved from it. Now, look in, uh, look in Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, the last chapter of the book of Daniel. And see what Daniel says about chapter 12, verse 1. And see what he says about the tribulation period. He said, at that time Michael shall stand up. Michael, the great archangel. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. He's the protector of God's people. And then look what he says. There shall be a time of what? A time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered. And even Daniel says there's a time coming. There's never been a time like it before. But God's people will be what? Will be delivered. So there you have from the New Testament and the Old Testament verses describing this period of time called the tribulation period. Many other verses. We just picked those three. So now let's go to Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and let's, let's read as the first seal uh, on that scroll is broken. Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Look what it says. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. So this is Jesus opening these seals. And I heard one of the four living creatures. We were introduced to those four living creatures over in chapter 4 in the throne room of heaven there around God's throne. I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And John said, I looked and behold, he saw a what? White horse. I looked and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. So if you read about somebody on a white horse, you immediately would say, who is that on a white horse? Who do you think? If I took you to Revelation chapter 19, Heaven opens up again, and here's Jesus coming out of heaven on a white horse, and you and I are on white horses following him. So you kind of think, well, if it's in chapter 19, if it's Jesus on a white horse, and here's a guy on a white horse, and he's wearing a crown, and, he, and he's got a bow, then would, that, would this not also be Jesus too? 
But if you follow this story, as we will, and look at these four horsemen, we will find out that the next horseman represents death or war, and 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 war and blood, and, and the next one represents starvation, and and the last one represents death and hell. Then it's hard for me to believe that Jesus would come out leading a charge that would take people to war and blood and and uh, starvation and hell, because we know in that seven year period, that tribulation period, uh that the Antichrist is going to rule and reign on this whole earth. And the Antichrist, he, he tries every way he can. The, the devil, God has his trinity, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The devil has his trinity. It's the devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And uh, as we follow the Antichrist, that first three and a half years of the tribulation period that I told you he's going to be crying peace, 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 and everybody's going to follow him. I believe, and and I believe this because of the Bible scholars that I study after, that this person on this white horse is the Antichrist, and he's he's preaching peace. But he's really just taking control of the world. And and it's a false peace. And we have many scriptures that uh, that would help us see that, that that's probably... But, but some people will tell you that, that this on a person on a white horse, this would be Christ Jesus. But the Bible scholars that, that I follow would say, this is not Jesus, this is the Antichrist acting as Jesus. So let's look at those verses. John chapter 5, John chapter 5, verse 43. John 5, 43. And uh, let me get there. Jesus was saying on this day, I have come in my Father's name and you do not receive me. Jesus said, I have come to the earth and yet you don't receive me. You don't acknowledge me. But then he said, if another comes in his name, him you will receive. And uh, that's what's going to happen. They, 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 they refused Jesus when he came. But we're going to accept the Antichrist when he comes and make him leader of the world. And then we can go back to uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel chapter 8, and uh, here's what Daniel says about uh, this person ruling. Daniel uh, chapter 8, verse uh, 25. says, Through his cunning he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. He's coming, and he's cunning, and he's going to deceive people. And he will exalt himself in his heart, he shall destroy many and their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. So again, talking about the Antichrist. When he comes, he's going to deceive people, but he's in it for himself, not for others. And uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, talks about uh, when he comes. It says, uh, For God has put it into their hearts, to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. So as the world falls in line to, uh, to follow the Antichrist and let him be the leader of the world, God is saying, you're, you're just fulfilling my purpose. You're doing exactly what uh, I knew you were going to do. You will give your kingdoms to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. So we have the first seal broken. Uh, the rider on the white horse, uh, he goes forth. Uh, he, he's wearing a crown, but the crown he's wearing is not the crown of a king, but it's a crown of a conqueror. And he's going forth to conquer the earth. He has a bow, but it doesn't mention arrows because he's coming in peace. And, um, and it said that, 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 that God really had, uh, had allowed him or given him these things to do this. It said, who who, who, who uh, sat on and had a bow and a crown was given to him. A crown given to him meaning what? God has put him in that position. He didn't, he didn't take that authority. He, he, that was not his authority. God just allowed him to take that and to do that for, for a time period. So we got a rider on a white horse. 
Then Revelation chapter 6, look at verses 3 and 4. The second seal is broken, and we've got a second writer. Verse 3, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. And I saw another horse. It was fiery red that went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. So here we see that that three and a half years of peace has ended. And here comes the second horse from the second seal being opened. This horse is fiery red. And it was granted on to him to take peace from the earth. And that people should kill one another. This is talking about war. This is talking about people destroying each other and killing each other and declaring war on each other. So, uh, again, the first horse, the white horse, is the Antichrist selling peace. But now we've got the second horse, and uh, the peace is over. And, and, and the wars have started. And, um, you know, we, we kind of live in a world where wars are just kind of continuous. Um, Jesus talked about wars and rumor wars, in, uh, and and we have over like over fifty thousand nuclear devices stored around the world, that uh, one could be fired at any time, that that would kill millions of people. General Omar Bradley said this. He said, "We know more about war than we do about peace. We know more about killing than we do about living. We have too many men of science and too few men of God. And if you look at uh, the great wars, World War One, World War Two. Millions, millions of people died on the battlefield uh, in that last three and a half years. The war, uh, the war around the world is going to be a horrible thing. And, and we're going to find out in a minute that a fourth of the population will die uh, in that three and a half year period. A fourth of the population uh, is going to die. So the second horse is war. And bloodshed, the red horse. Look at verses 5 and 6, the third horse. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. So the third horse comes forward. Uh, this is a black horse. And uh, the rider on the black horse has what in his hand? A set of scales. The scales to do what? To weigh something, right? And he is saying that you can get, uh, does it say, what's your Bible say? A loaf of bread? How much? A measure of wheat? A measure of wheat for a penny. Uh, in, in Bible times, it talked about a, a quart of wheat for a denarius. A denarius was a man's wages for a day. So this verse would be saying, in this famine, a person would have to pay what? A day's wages for a little bit of bread. You and I can't relate to that, can we? I mean, we can go to Walmart and they got anything you can think of to eat that we can buy. Can you imagine? If all the money you earned in a day, the only... It would take all your money every day just to get a little bit of bread to get you by. You and I, we, we just, we can't relate to that. Uh, it's amazing all that we have. And, uh, but, but yet we have people in our world today that's starving to death, right? Something I read said 10,000 people will die every day today from starvation. Um, it's going to be a terrible thing. There, you know, they're going to have this time of peace and think everything is fine. And then war is going to break out. And uh, some of you were, were around for World War II and you know what rationing was about. Uh, at that time when food was rationed, gasoline was rationed, um, war stops production of food. And, and the kind of wars that's going to be going on here in this second three and a half years is going to bring starvation uh, uh to people around the world. And uh, you can get a little more barley than you can wheat. So maybe you can get by on, on three quarts of barley soup. 
But um, it's going to be terrible. Uh, people starving to death. And uh, when you think about it, I read this. From the time of Adam and Eve until 1850, it took that many years for the world to have a billion people. 1850. Wasn't that long ago, right? But from 1850, then it took less than 80 years to 1930 to get to 2 billion people. But then it took less than 31 years, 1961, to get to 3 billion people. But then it only took 15 years, from 1961 to 1976, to get to 4 billion people. How many people are in the world today? Anybody know? Close to 8 million. Good. I had to ask my phone that question today. And uh, it, it's, 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 it's close to 8 million people. So... Think how population is exploding. We didn't get to a billion people until 1850. But now we've gone from a billion to 7 billion or 8 billion. And, uh, and the growth is just getting faster and faster. So when we talk about starvation and all these things, there, there's more people to feed in the world today than ever before. And uh, the shortages and the rationing is coming according to that scripture. And then let's look at the fourth horse. Our last two verses, verse 7 and 8. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death. And Hades followed with him. Does your Bible say Hades? What's the difference between Hades and hell, or is there a difference? Richard? That's good. That's why that's the term I use, a holding cell. It's like if you got arrested today. If Gary came and arrested you here in Waller County today, he would take you down to the county jail, right? And 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 you would stay in the county jail until you had your trial. And if you were found guilty and guilty of like murder, let's say they would send you where? To to the big house up in Huntsville, right? So you got you got the, the county jail, the holding cell, and you stay there until your trial and then after the trial, you're sent to the big house. And uh, that, that's kind of what Hades is. You know, it's a holding cell. Richard? Only going to get worse. Yeah, yeah. True statement. True statement. So now we have the horse of death. One-fourth of the earth dies. If that's eight billion people, two billion people will die during that great tribulation. Uh, and all the wars of the earth, 100 million have died to date. So the wars, all the wars before, have, can, cannot hold a light to what is coming. So, chapter 5, Jesus is worthy to take that book, that scroll, and to open it. He does it one seal at a time. The first four seals he breaks. Loose is first a white horse, which I believe and scholars believe represent the Antichrist. A red horse, war to follow. A black horse, famine to follow war. And a pale horse, death of a, of a fourth of the people on earth. And when it talked about death, it talked about pestilences. Um, it says, And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. And uh, it's interesting when I read the commentaries about what are the beasts of the earth? You know, we're going to be attacked or the people here are going to be attacked by beasts. And every commentary I read talked about rats. Rats. And they said rats, the world's most destructive creature. That's where the bubonic plague came from that killed a third of the population of Europe at one time. The fleas on the rats carry typhus. And they say you can kill 95% of the rats and in one year they will be back to the number they were. Uh, they carry 35 known diseases. So, who knows? But, um, it's coming. And, and, and to wrap this all up for you, 
and, and let you see that the progression of these four horses. Uh, go back with me and we'll be done. Go back with me to Matthew 24, uh, verses 3 through 9. Matthew 24, again, the, the disciples come to Jesus and they ask him, uh, what, what are the end times? When are these things going to happen? When are they coming? It said they came to him privately. There was not a crowd there, just, just the, uh, the disciples and Jesus. Matthew chapter 24. Um, starting with verse 3. It says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when, we, when, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And the end of the age. So, the disciples wanted to know what? Exactly what you and I are trying to find out in going through Revelation, right? What, what's going to happen in the end days? Now listen what Jesus tells them. And, and, and listen how these four horses fit in to what Jesus says. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. So, verses 4 and 5 is a picture of what? The white horse. Deception. You could write white horse right there, uh, in 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 your column if you wanted to and say here's a picture of the white horse it's a picture of deception then look at uh, verse 6 and you will hear of what wars and rumors of wars what is that that's the red horse right the red horse of war so you got the red horse right there jesus said you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet and then verse 7, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be what? Famines. What is that? That's a black horse. The black horse of famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. The black horse. And then verses 8 and 9, and these are just the beginning of sorrows. And then they will deliver you up to tribulation and will what? Kill you. What's a pale horse? Death. So as Jesus described to his disciples right there in Matthew 24, he described to them those four horses. Deception, uh, war and blood, famine, and uh, death. Death and Hades. So the first four seals are open and they all lead to terrible, terrible things in a time period called the tribulation. What does that mean to you and me? Well, if we're saved, it doesn't mean much because I plan on being in chapters 4 and 5 in the throne room in heaven when this takes place on earth. Uh, I think we'll be raptured out of here. So I, when, when he said he's going to deliver us from the wrath to come, I think he will deliver us. But don't we all have friends, family members, loved ones that have not made that decision? And as we read about these horrible things, and folks are horrible, you and I can't get our arms around it, it's so bad. Uh, that's their future if they're still here. If they die before that happens, then they're going to end up in that place that Richard was talking about, Hades, that holding cell, until that uh, great white throne of judgment takes place. Uh, so... We can rejoice in the fact that we can read about it, understand that it's coming, know how it's going to happen, but we don't have to be here to face it. But a lot of people will if they don't get saved. And that ought to stir our hearts as Christians and as a church to do whatever we can to win them to Christ. Sunday morning, Levin and I talked about it earlier. We're going to baptize Levin Sunday morning. Won't that be a good morning? And uh, just another picture. Yeah, give, give God a hand. Uh, just another picture of another person saved for eternity. And Levin doesn't have to worry about this tribulation period that we're talking about. So uh, that'll be a good day. All right, any thoughts, comments, questions? Jim will take all your questions if you have any questions. That's a tough lesson. Anybody? All right. Let's pray.